In a cow pasture on High Road stood a majestic live oak. For two years, I walked in every direction, through woods and fields, around lakes, within a radius of a dozen miles of Tallahassee. But I always returned to the pasture at the foot of High Road. I selected for my house a spot which would command a view of the tree as an unbroken arch against the sky. There, in 1955, I decided to build my house. Laura always walked to her own drum. She taught through liberal arts discipline in her comparative literature classes. And she wore tennis shoes back then as a professor. Um, she lived a very simple life. She didn't hang out, you know, in the common rooms and, and with, you know, and she didn't go out to, to, the, um, to the parties. Um, she usually came back to her cottage. She was very much um, strong-willed woman. And, and I know just through her writings, she was very opinionated on, on, on her beliefs. I mean, she wrote, you know, like Achilles to Christ, you know, comparative of, of the Iliad to Tolstoy's War and Peace. And, and she really always had in mind how she wanted to live. She wrote it in her book, about why she wanted to build the cottage and why this land had to be so perfect for her. So she says um, that she kept being drawn back to this property even though it was a cow pasture and it was overgrown and she had to climb the barbed wire to get into the property was the tree. The tree kept drawing her back and she said that she would go out and look at other pieces of property for, at, in Tallahassee and she'd still be drawn back to the tree. From every angle I viewed the live oak, always in leaf and always beautiful, with resurrection fern climbing its huge branches, with the grace of a southern belle in a billowing skirt, this moss-draped live oak swept the ground in every direction. It was a tree to inspire poets. The Lichgate oak is approximately probably 300 to 350 years old, and that it comes from one acorn. To purchase the acres, I had to arrange a loan. I went to the bank. I'm going to buy a tree, I said. A what? asked the surprised official. A tree on High Road, I answered more specifically. Are you an art teacher? he inquired. He could think of no one more impractical. They didn't get, make loans to women without a male signature back then. She had to borrow money from friends. And, and then the, the home was made over a period of time. It wasn't just the cottage just sprang up. This was made over a period of a, mm -hmm. of, uh, a year and a half. And, and she literally lived in the cottage when it still had tar paper roof. The builder was Baskin Homes out of North Carolina because she had a cottage in North Carolina. And um, so she knew Baskin Homes, and he was, he was a craftsman. And he, he would come down here and work on the cottage. And he's the one that built the cottage. And her inspiration was uh, an early English home called a Crux House, and um, the simplicity of the early English cottages. And that was her inspiration architecturally. She said that she wanted um, people to think that they were somehow transported to medieval England when they came upon Lynchgate on High Road. <laughs> because for more than half a century my thoughts have moved in and out of an imaginary Lichgate, I have decided to erect a memorial, fit and fine to the world of retrospect. Though in the olden days a Lichgate separated the world of the living from the world of the dead, paradoxically enough, in our populous existence, the world of the dead on the other side of the Lichgate may be the place where one is not only alive, but living. And 
coming up to the church cemeteries, you would find a covered gate and a place to pull yourself together and to take a, take a pause before you entered the cemetery. A lot of times, if the weather was real bad and, and raining, um, they would literally have the service under the lich gate and then proceed into the cemetery to rest their burden. Now, Dr. Jepson said that the lich gate came in and out of her mind um, since she was a young woman and she wanted to build a symbolic lich gate on her property when she built her home. And to her, it represented a place of retrospect. And she said in her book, wouldn't it be nice by going through the lich gate, you could bring the two worlds together, the world that we inhabit and the world to come. Here was a curiosity, out of time and place, a fairy tale creation come to settle as if by a spell in the Florida sunshine. Tallahassee during the time that Dr. Jepson built this, this was on the edge of town. This was, and, and of course over there next door where all the apartments are, that was swamp, that was lowland. And she talks about all the frogs and, and all the noise from the critters at night. But that was all filled in for the apartments. And this was absolutely beyond uh, Thorpe Street, beyond that, you know, it was country. I mean, if you left downtown in the 50s, it was dirt road. Since I did not try to control unruly nature with a mower, more and more wildflowers threatened with extinction flourished. Small creatures were constant visitors to my house before the swamp was filled, before civilization encroached upon their habitat. Green tree frogs climbing the window panes a knoll sunning themselves on the stone steps and the meandering snail. It's important to preserve places like Lich Gate because what about our future? What, do, what are we leaving behind for the generation coming up behind us? What do they have to look at? Let's say downtown had gotten its way and took down all the oak trees there. Where else in Tallahassee do we have something like this, this beautiful, this natural? but also it's showing them what you can do through advocacy. But this is proof. You can make a difference. You can make a change. To conquer time, to preserve the essence of the past, and to escape into reality. These were my triple desires when I started to build Lichgate on High Road. Oh, triumphant and transporting thought that some antiquary in years to come should unearth Lichgate on High Road and consider it a site memorable in the annals of Tallahassee.